Have you ever had an easy opportunity at the net, but messed it up? Of course you have, we all have. But what if we could tell you that in this video, we can give you some tips so that you never miss a shot like this again, as well as telling you how you can finish off even more shots at the net. Well, that's what we're going to do. So let's get to it. So firstly, footwork is really important in these shots. We often see people make mistakes because they get too close to the net and become tucked in, meaning they either can't adjust their positioning quickly or are too late onto the shuttle and they're therefore unable to play the shot effectively. You should also always lead with your racket leg and then also allow enough room between your body and the shuttle so that your arm's not too bent or too straight when you're hitting the shuttle. It's likely that you'll need to move quickly to the net to make sure that you're playing the shuttle above the height of the net and therefore in a downwards direction. And whilst doing this, you need to remain in control of your body. Having this control of your movement and being in the right position will allow you to do everything you need to do with your racket, which we'll go on to now. As we often say in our videos, as soon as you see your opponent is taking the shuttle below the height of the net, you need to get your racket up as they physically can't play their shot downwards. Having your racket already up and ready means you don't waste any time lifting up before playing your shot. And this therefore enables you to take the shuttle earlier. And this is really important for the net kill. So now you're in the right position with your racket up, we need to look at how you approach the shot and your shot execution. Yeah, so if it's an easier net kill and you have a little bit more time, then you can afford to have a bit of a bigger swing to help you generate the power and get over the top of the shuttle. And this is really important to ensuring that the shuttle doesn't go out of the back of the court. And to do this, you need to use your wrist to snap over the top, as you can see here. But make sure your swing isn't too big, as this is where a lot of people go wrong. Again, having a big swing can often mean you reach your contact point later and end up hitting it out of the back of the court or even letting it drop so late you hit it in the net. It's really important to use your fingers and thumb to generate the power in this shot and not just your whole arm. So you use your fingers to generate most of the power on your forehand side and your thumb to generate most of the power on your backhand side. To be able to use your fingers and thumb effectively, like Greg's just shown, you need to have a loose grip on your approach to the shot, as this enables you to make any small adjustments that you need. And then upon impact, you simply squeeze your grip to create the power. Having this short swing and rebound action that we're showing is also really important to prevent you from following through in your shot and hitting the net, which is of course a fault. It's also important to have this rebound in case your opponent somehow gets your kill back. And what about the footwork for this easy kill? Well, you can use a jump, but we'd recommend more of an explosive step or lunge. Doing this movement might mean you're slightly less explosive, but you will have more control of your body moving like this, rather than moving up and down as you do on a jump. You can also recover better with this footwork as you're committing slightly less to the shot. And we'll go on to discuss the jump footwork more as we'll be using it for the next type of kill. Now you might be thinking, should I hit my kill straight or cross? And there's not really a right or wrong answer, but people do tend to prefer hitting cross as that's more of a natural swing. But if you can, we'd recommend learning both. So if you need to, you can target the gap in the court or the weaker player in doubles. And you might also have to slightly change your grip from a forehand or backhand grip to a bevel grip to change the direction of the shot. Now what about if you have less time because your opponent's played a shot that's tight to the net? Well, here you would use a different type of shot with a shorter swing and often less power with the shuttle landing around the service line. It's what we call a brush off. This is because you're gently trying to brush the top of the shuttle so it goes downwards and over the net. You would have a forehand to panhandle grip on the forehand side, brushing it from right to left if you're right-handed and left to right if you're left-handed. And on the backhand side, you would use a backhand grip again and gently brush from left to right if you're right-handed and right to left if you're left-handed. And on these shots, you really have to try and come over the shuttle. Now we used a lunge for the easy kill, but you might have noticed that we've been using a jump for this brush off. This is for a couple of reasons. First, you can commit 100% to the kill in anticipation of it not coming back. And it's also more of an explosive and threatening movement. 
but it is harder to get the timing right for this footwork. You need to time your jump so that you're at your peak height as you strike the shuttle. You definitely don't want to be traveling downwards as you hit it, as it's more likely to go in the net. Of course, in a match, you've got to make a split second decision as to which shot you're going to play. So we're now going to give you three practices that will help with this and also help you improve your technique. The first practice is where you get someone to hand feed you or racket feed if they're able to. This exercise focuses on practicing your technique and movement to the shot. And of course, make sure you practice both your forehand and your backhand side. You can then progress to playing a net shot first to set up the kill. And this is a great practice to improve your movement, timing and anticipation. The feeder throws a shuttle in and then hits the next shot back anywhere across the net. So you have to be ready and get used to looking at their racket positioning and where the shuttle is likely to go. Using the whole of the front court also gets you used to changing your grip quickly. If you find that you struggle to racket feed the second shot, you can throw it in like we're showing here. Now, as with most practices we show, we're always trying to progress them into more realistic and match specific scenarios. So for the last practice, we have one defender in the middle of the court who is hitting up to the worker and then when the time is right, the worker can practice their net kills. The defender should also play some softer shots to bring the worker closer to the net and possibly set up their brush offs. In this practice, you really get used to watching your opponent's racket and judging the flight path of the shuttle to make a decision of what shot you should play from this. And if you want more multi-feed exercises that you can do to practice your game, including your net sharpness, then we have 27 different multi-feed programs on our website. We'll include a link in the description below. Now, what happens if you don't have enough time to take the shuttle above the height of the net, like we've shown in this video? Well, if you want to learn how to play the perfect doubles net shot, then check out this video here. Or if you want to learn the three different types of net shots you can play in singles, check out this video here. That's it for today's video. If you've enjoyed it, please don't forget to give it a like, smash the subscribe button if you're new to the channel, and we'll see you on another video.